So the drink I'm gonna make for you is the Ramos Gin Fizz. The reason this drink has meaning to me is because I bartended for 15, 16 years before I moved to California, and I never did craft. Like I was always doing high volume, so it was make it red, make it strong, get it out, get it done fast. So um, two months before I moved out here to open up a little speakeasy style concept, I went to New Orleans and I experienced my first Ramos Gin Fizz, which I had never had before in my life. Um, I'd never heard of it had never seen it, nothing. So I had one at the Sazerac Bar in the Roosevelt Hotel and it was amazing. When I moved out here, one of the first menus we did was for New Orleans. And sure enough, we put the Ramos Gin Fizz on the menu since I had just learned how to make it. I made it my goal to master it or at least try to. I started getting good at it, making sure everything was settled right, making sure it looked good. And the very first writer that came in to do an interview with me, he asked me to just make him whatever. So I said, all right, how about a Ramos Gin Fizz? And he, right away, I remember his reaction. It was just like, that's a bold move. And I was like, all right, here goes nothing. <laughs> so I made him one and he absolutely loved it. And then he decides to tell me a story about how his wife was just introduced to Ramos Gin Fizzes and how she, um, her and her best friend absolutely love him, so he was gonna send her in to see me. So then, like, it was probably two months later, these two ladies, I'm busy, I'm working in a little room by myself, and it's full, and these two ladies walk into the back of the room, and I just remember looking up and said, I'll be right with you ladies, and then they kind of freaked me out, because they were like, oh, no worries, like, we're so happy to be here. I'm like, okay, I don't know these women, like, I don't know who they are, but all right, cool. So then I walk up, and they introduced themselves. She's like, hi, I'm Heather and Jill. And um, she's like, my husband sent me in. I'm like, oh, who's your husband? And she said, Rich Manning. So I'm like, oh, so you want a Ramos Gin Fizz? And both of their jaws dropped. They're just like, oh my God, how does, like, how does he know he remembered? Like, so they were mind blown by that. And then once I made them one, they're friends for life. So I'm always trying to do different takes on a Ramos Gin Fizz, just to add different flavors. So this one is for Halloween that I'm doing this year for our menu, and it is the candy corn gin fizz. So I made an actual candy corn syrup. I just basically melted down candy corn, so you get the candy corn flavor. Just add that to my lemon juice, lime juice, gin, heavy cream, and I put a little walnut bitters in there, just for some extra flavor. three ice cubes. So a lot of bartenders hate this cocktail. I thought mojitos were bad when I lived in Florida. And then I learned how to make this and to make it properly, it takes about 13 to 15 minutes because you have to let it settle in order to get the right foam and everything like that. You want it to layer properly. So it does take a while and it, you have to shake it till the ice is gone. So that's why a lot of bartenders will hate you if you order it. But I like it because it gives me a chance to show off, so. <laughs> Pro tip, if you will, or life hack. <laughs> um, as a bartender, tapping it, what this does is it actually helps you just get that separation to help it settle a little more. But then also what it does is because the last part of the cocktail making technique is kind of a show, people really enjoy watching it. So by tapping it at the end, once it's settling, you get people's attention. So they look over and then they're wondering why you're spanking a drink or doing what you're doing. And then, you know, just kind of set it down and finish out the cocktail and then, the, you know, jaws fall to the floor and they're just like, oh my gosh, how did they do that? Um, so it's just really cool for like just the whole experience that you give your guests as a bartender if you can make one of these properly. stiff our foam is by garnishing it a little bit. So these are just little candy corn balls. And the garnishing is actually my favorite part because I like to see what will actually hold in this foam that I create. So the heavier the things you can hold, it means the more uh, proper foam you have on there. 
It's a nice solid uh, consistency, so it gives a great texture and mouthfeel to the drink. It's like drinking a milkshake. All right, I think we're there. So I've got the nice clear line right here, very defined. So that's what I always look for. And usually the lower down it is, the higher you can go. <laughs> so this is the fun part. That is a candy corn fizz. <laughs>